Hey, welcome everybody to Feedback Friday. We're going to be starting at 10.15 a.m. moving forward because it's butting right up against an office hour for our Mastermind students at 9.30. I wanted to say welcome, happy Friday to everybody. We're going to get into a lot of Q&A, a lot of questions from this last week that you guys have had. And I also have a couple announcements that are going to be really beneficial, especially if you're um, looking to go nationally, virtually invest in real estate, because there is a tool, you guys, it's no strange like concept, privy, we've talked about this before, but we're coming to a point where next week on Wednesday, we'll be live on the 8th, kind of just pulling back the curtain, sharing more about what our process looks like right now. We're meeting with Benson Juarez, and I'll link a registration to that webinar in the description. You're not going to want to miss that because uh, as far as the webinar itself, this it's it's really something that you can use to make money in real estate right now quickly and easily because we're going to share step by step by step how to find properties that you're either going to wholesale or you're going to do creative to analyze those properties as well as find the buyer and get paid just using privy so there's other marketing methods that we talk about but that's just privy and we're also going to uh, answer uh, those top level questions that you've had so you can be there live just so you know when that is november 8th at 7 p.m eastern 4 p.m pacific so join chris closes your deal and benson juarez it's going to be massively valuable for you and if you decide uh you know you want to see that but unfortunately you didn't cancel all your plans as you should right now then you might want to check out the video at the end because at some at the point where it's passed we'll go back and we'll put that as the next video but more importantly anybody can do this to make money in real estate right now and that means you so it's free webinar uh sh show up uh with uh you know eagerness to learn if you are just getting started or show up with an eagerness to expand and scale into a virtual market because that's exactly what we can do uh and actually andrew is hanging out with me He's popping on right now, so we'll see him come on. But we're still going to be going through some of those questions. And frankly, if he has any questions, we're going to be uh, we're going to be bringing those up as well. So, welcome everybody. That was what I wanted to share as far as announcements are concerned. And you know, this is that was the mention about Privy. There's a couple other questions related to it that we have, and then AI cold calling. Uh, is another question that we have coming up and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to answer it by having that conversation live because I got somebody in the comment section who uh, mm -hmm. said hey I'd really mm -hmm. like you to say this and see what happens so we're just going to see what happens my goal is to break the AI because the more we can break it apart and kind of look at it from that 500 foot perspective we can see where those problems are to then solve them and what we desire is that you know, not to put any, anybody out of a job, right? But it's easy and we're real estate investing made easy to just click a button and have AI call your prospects for cold calling. In addition to that, we do that for lead management. Hey, what's up, Andrew? You're live obviously on YouTube and your phone Hello. number here, just so you know. I was correct. Yeah, I know. I usually keep it in there. Uh, yeah, tried, called, no answers. You know, it's challenging to get people to follow through on appointments. <laughs> yeah, it is. And that kind of speaks to the cold calling aspect as far as AI is concerned. If it's not a lead that you have some deep invested time, effort, and energy into. And that's what these are, too. You know, warm yeah. leads that aren't following through on appointments. Yeah. Well, um, you did just make that call to this seller. That deal, I'm just curious, as kind of a sidebar, What? Mm -hmm. uh, how long have you been nurturing that prospect? um that one was from yesterday honestly we used the ai text platform to reach out to this person they were hit yesterday and he was ready to chat so um went to a phone call and um put him in the automated drip that's Text awesome. a couple times this weekend and see what uh comes of it if we can reschedule for next week that's awesome man the ai text platform that he's talking about everyone is um it's creative ri reply right which we which we really like, and actually we have uh, somebody else in the mastermind who is using that as a CRM as well. Andrew's not; he's using Forefront CRM. We're using Forefront CRM. We're also scaling, so we're looking into a different one, not because Forefront is not 
giving us the ability to do that. We're just doing a specific dispo process. So we needed a different CRM for that. Uh, and as you guys know, with that dispo, actually, you may not know. So it's good that you're here listening to this, because if you have a deal that you can't close and get across the finish line, just send it to us and we will get on live. We've done that with Andrew before and saved a couple deals, closed a couple deals. Um, and then also the dispo side of that is if you have a property under contract, but you can't get rid of it, um, you know, we're scaling our disposition side so that we can accommodate even more. But of course, our mastermind students get priority. So if you are not a member of the mastermind and you want to submit a lead, you can, but we're going to let you know if we have the capacity to take it on because we're prioritizing. Do you need your glasses on? Uh, they're blue light blocker glasses. And I realized okay. that, like, I realized. <laughs> Your screen's right in one of your two. <laughs> I know it looks weird, and that's why I put it off. But like, I don't know. It just feels better. These actually work, and the cool thing is they were like ten dollars on Amazon. Crazy, right? Because I've seen some that are way more expensive than that. But those work versus the other ones I've paid sixty bucks for. So, yeah, no kidding. Good stuff, man. I have a question here from Watson Parker, and it's about the the launch control video is this the death of launch control and i'll tell you i hate to say this but i am in no way shape or form in control of what launch control does or doesn't do but i know a lot of people are feeling the same thing the recent template changes with launch control have me searching for alternatives on one hand they're the best for tcpa compliance but the new templates are way too vague and look so much more like spam. Now, what I did was I replied to that, but I think for your benefit watching, I want you to know, we started to make a transition and it's smarter contact, the regulations will happen, uh, but we were kind of just tired of getting the rug pulled out from underneath us. It doesn't mean that launch control isn't effective, but one critical thing that launch control doesn't have that smarter contact does have among a couple others is you can actually voice to text. So I, I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, right? You can, in a text thread to anybody on your phone, you can just say something and it'll pop up in their text and then you just play it. Well, that functionality, it, it exists with smarter contact. So that's something that is ostensibly gonna be a game changer. This next week, we're piloting that, we're trying it out. We have new lists we're uploading into smarter contact uh, to try that feature out in particular and we'll tell you what we think. And by next Friday, you're probably going to see uh, uh, some debrief on that, if not actual videos posted where we're walking through Smarter Contact. So I'd highly recommend that. Yeah, for that launch control video, how is that your recent death of launch control video? Or well, when you say video? recent, I'll tell you that video is um, getting the exact date where I posted it, but I know it's almost a year it was 11 yeah. months ago yeah so to give my perspective that's about when i made the switch you know when i had you know i'd been using launch control for about a year at that point and i saw a massive shift in my um warm lead conversion rate you know early on we were getting you know you know top tier doing 50 75000 messages a month you know we were getting 10 to 15 I call them not cold leads, you know, people who gave you some inclination that they're interested, but you got to call them to follow through on them. Uh, so, you know, 10 to 15, not cold leads a day um, that by the time they started doing all the updates last fall, you know, we, we were getting one to two not cold leads a day. And for the amount of volume that we were doing, the lack of um, result we were getting out of it uh, was real. It made it really challenging to, you know, Put that investment forward on a monthly basis because they had just gone through a price increase too you know kind of in in a wouldn't necessarily say overnight but in a 90-day notification window the price increased basically 50 percent at the top level so i don't even uh, think it was 90 days man i think it was like i think it was it was like july or maybe june for like a september 1st or october 1st price hike so oh you know what you're right. It was. It. I remember that because we then, had signed up for the highest packages on all three of the accounts that we were using for mm -hmm. our own business, and then we're like, okay, so we're gonna double 
this and that's a big we were spending 25k a month in marketing yeah we're not doing that anymore obviously you're using uh creative rei reply as your text platform because the the ai i know that just to be frank with everybody here something you won't hear about creative rei reply outside of this is uh there are some problems with it right um but yeah, they it's work. very much a, a toddler ai where um, I figured out in order to make sure I'm capturing all the leads that I'm spending money on and putting through um, the AI platform, I have a, a VA now who spends a couple hours a day making sure those leads are managed and the AI is either responding properly or didn't respond properly and we need to pick up the conversation, but you know, not letting anything fall through the cracks. What would you say is a percentage like uh, of, of coming from toddler, like 1% being it's still the same? to 100% being they've completely revamped it and it's now a full-grown adult since uh -huh. the time. Um, so for us, when we had first signed up, the way it was kind of, uh, you know, the what I had gathered from the initial pitch of like how the system works was kind of like a set it and forget it type of thing. And I quickly learned that like, ooh, like over the course of a month in running it, we had built up like, 250 300 unread messages in the pipeline meaning that like somebody said something and then the ai didn't respond and now it's just kind of sitting there in the ether so that was probably our build up over the course of 30 days and it took us about maybe maybe a week two weeks to go through and clear those up doing like you know three hours a day of work um now that we're caught up you know anything that the ai isn't getting you know we're getting tops 10 unread messages a day. Um, so we're able to keep keep tabs on that pipeline within like 30 minutes and then make sure we're just appointment setting. And because there's some goofiness where it'll ask the person, hey, this is an appointment. You know, it's it's trying to figure out with the the funnels when to let the AI run with it, when to um, stop the AI and take over the conversation. And then for us, because we use Forefront as our CRM, Creative REI reply is a CRM, but that's not where we maintain everything. So it's making that call of like, hey, AI booked us an appointment. Once that happens, we're we're pretty much deading the lead in Creative REI reply and making sure it's getting into forefront so we can maintain future communication that way. Because that's where all our follow-ups are built up and everything. So that's where we want to keep it centralized. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because the the way that you're doing it, that's kind of the way that we're doing it too. We only have uh, a VA just going in there and kind of checking up to make sure that it's working properly. But other than that, for us, it's a set it and forget it. And it's one of the branches of marketing, right? There's others. And, uh, you know, we've talked about it on the channel, but to be more concise, it's we want just the, the types of leads targeted. And that means different platforms and different methods. And these are the types of leads on market, off market, and then formally on market, i.e. expired listings. And we want for sale by owners. So right. kind of niche lists exist in each one of those types, right? Yeah. Depending on the, the, you know, are they in foreclosure, not foreclosure tax liens, this and that, but uh, by and large, the reason why we're using creative RI reply and, I mean, it is a set it and forget it for us. So we just look at the appointment on the calendar and then we make the call is for the expired listings and for the for sale by owners that are automatically scrubbed. And all that whole piece, like the, the work that goes into actually sourcing the data and then, uh, you know, exporting the list and then putting those lists to get skip trace and skip tracing the list and then uploading in the campaign and then executing the campaign, all that stuff is done. So what, Andrew's speaking to is the, the part of the process that is the conversational AI chatbot via text message marketing that uh, still, as he put it, is kind of like its infancy stage. I would say from my perspective, it's more of like a teenager. So, you know, teenagers, they act out while well, the AI is acting out every once in a while. They don't clean their room when you ask them to. The <laughs> So you just keep wanting to try and book an appointment. Just book an appointment. How many times do I have to tell you, son? Yeah, we had a we had a guy in the forefront um, that he had originally set an appointment and we took the conversation to forefront, but we ended up not stopping the drip in creative REI reply. Oh yeah. So it ended up hitting him back with the drip. And then it, it, it's 
kind of started the conversation over again, like, hey, would you like to schedule an appointment with our home buyer, Andrew? <laughs> like, uh, and so he ended up, when I finally got on the phone with him again, he's like, yeah, I don't know who Mia is, but like, if that's a human, like, that's pretty rough communication. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, we're still working through it, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, click, dead, dead, dead. <laughs> yeah, did you tell him that it was AI? Yeah, interesting. I don't know if I would. Uh, we've we've actually looked into the speaking of the AI and part of the topic to cover is the cold calling AI, the lead management AI, and that is conversational AI on the phone, not just right. via chat. And we were in this group and are still a part of it where we were postulating a theory. And the theory is this: Is it better to on the phone as you listen to something that pretty much sounds like a human? but you kind of have your doubts. Is it better to identify right in the script that you're prompting this AI conversational bot to say that they are AI, or is it better to like not talk about it? And then when they say, oh, are you a real person? Then just have the AI respond with like, ha, of course, I'm a real person. I have a conversation <laughs> with you right now. <laughs> Laugh it off. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what it does. I so, have not gotten that. <laughs> Yeah, no, I am not Skynet. I am not taking over the world. I am not self-aware. You know what? My reference point that I really He's like so for uh, robots and taking over the world isn't actually Terminator. It's Futurama when Bender says, death to humans. Never watched it. Sorry. I don't like The Simpsons, but I actually like Futurama. And the same, same person, Matt Growing is his name. So he did both of them. But Burning. anyway... The uh, the cold the book call I'm reading stuff. about the uh, the the guy who was pretty much uncredited but but extremely pivotal to the Simpsons success. It's the Givers and Takers book, um, talking about how, uh, like in medical school, the people who usually finish last are the givers because they're you know giving 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 and everybody else is benefiting from that. But then you know when it, you look at the people who are the the top performers mm -hmm. those people are also givers you know they're not takers they're not matchers it's those people who see the collaboration there so so the guy who did the simpsons for like 20 something years was really integral in, in developing their culture that still exists today and it's made it just run so long obviously it's applicable to running a successful business mm -hmm. And that's why it's in that book. Uh, one thing actually that I learned about the Simpsons and why you've heard of that theory where they're like, they predict the future. Yeah, right. The reason why they actually don't predict the future, they just guess and they're right, is because they have a whole team of actual scientists, or at least had, that were doing all sorts of trend research. Yeah. And they were really in it and they're like okay well this is happening and here's the computer algorithm that we created to predict what might happen as a result so like let's write jokes about this That's and cool. see if it happens like donald trump coming down the elevator or whatever right doing the same thing that in reality years later he did i don't know man predictive analytics that's cool I guess that's what it was but yeah that the the story goes that they actually are trying to do that so it's not some conspiracy it's just this is what it's they actually fact <laughs> yeah. yeah it's like they want people to view and consume their show which makes total sense so speaking of that we need to predict what business moves we should be making where the yeah. future of real estate investing lies and i think that part of that is ai cold calling and we had a question by somebody that said, I can't, I can't seem to get the click funnel working. I, I want to get a copy of your script. Uh, can you send it by email? Well, if you click this link here, you may or may not be able to see it. I'll leave it in the chat. You should be taken to this three steps to automate cold calling with AI. You can get started for free. Just step one, enter your details, click let's go, sign up for the account on the next page and launch your AI sales expert and then repeat your lists and stuff, all trainings of how to do that are coming. We're in the process of making that. We're in the process of initiating our initial cold calling campaigns. So understand the difference. Cold calling, you don't know these people. They're just a list you've pulled and then you're executing cold calling campaigns, in this case with AI. Versus lead management, Andrew talked about AI texting. 
with this person named Mia, which is not a real person. It's just low character count, M-I-A, right? And then a woman's name, ostensibly, whatever. If you're, if you're a man and you're named Mia, sorry, okay. But at the end of the day, we take that and then our goal is to lead manage with the AI as well, to call them up. So that's the, the showcase, or at least the live showcase that was in that previous video. And the nature of that question is, like, can I get the scripts for that? And the answer is yes. So you go there, you click on that link. And the, the URL is not really working right now. Why does it say I've been signed out? I need to sign back into this. Hopefully the live is still going to work and not cut out. But, oh, I changed the count. Hold on, guys, just a second. I'm going to make that call right now to somebody else's question, which I think is really cool, basically trying to break the AI. So that's what we're going to do here in just a second, if I can manage to log in properly. Ah, there we go. It logged me out of my dashboard for whatever reason. So I'm hoping that doesn't affect the live stream. Because I don't know, before we've had like the live stream just cut off. It says on Zoom, we're still going, but then it cuts it off and I'm just like, what a buzzkill. All right, let's see if we're still live. And by the way, if we are still live, yeah, we're still live. You guys put your questions in if you have any comments or whatever. We got Abraham, hello everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. What bot do you use for the messaging? Vani D. Uh, appreciate it. Oh, it says an error occurred. Let me check back later. Look at this, bro. We're not even live anymore. That's so stupid. I don't think we're live. It just like logged me. Up. Oh, we are live. Never mind. All right, everybody. Good thing we're still live. So you ready? Uh, how, are you ready? Oh, Maggie. Are this you guys my little ready? helper. You guys taking off to go to the pool now or what? I think so. You ready? You want to go swim? Yay! You want to go swimming with me? Okay. It's a lot cooler than listening to an AI cold caller. <laughs> go get ready. There's yeah, Bonnie, the bot that we use for messaging is is with Creative REI Reply, and you can actually get that bot if you want to try it for 30 days free if you use the link I'm about to drop right there. It's like uh, investortools.us backslash Mia. So let me just make sure that I get that link right for you. Yep, hire Mia is what it is. So I'll drop that in there for you right now. Got to be case sensitive. It, it, it is, but I'm going to actually put the link. It's, it's because it's bit.ly. We use it to like crunch the links. So that link you can... Uh, SMS bot for 30 days free. And then as far as the next step in that, what our desire is to lead manage is any of those touch points with that bot that the AI has in our campaigns, it puts an appointment on our calendar and then that calendar appointment is automatically called by the AI. And that AI is going to sound a lot like what you're about to hear. I will leave a, uh, a nugget of wisdom for anyone signing up through that process. Their standard free trial period is 10 days and it has to be manually adjusted to 30 days. So we actually had three or four days in the middle there where our AI wasn't working at all because that, that process had cut off after the 10 days. Uh, so just need to be in active communication with the support team there to make sure that you get the benefit of the full 30 days. And hopefully they've already resolved that issue. But if it is still standing when you're viewing this, then that's really good. Yep. You know what? I, Personal experience. I'm going to call the number through the computer. And I'm curious, can you tell me if you can hear this? Because if you can't, I left my phone upstairs. I'd have to run and go get it. But I want to see if this works because I'm going to answer this question. Cold call script, lead management. Which one is it? Ah, lead management. Here we go. So lead management AI, we call this person Danielle. So let's look, 619. Let's see if we can have this call happen right now. Is it coming through? Yep, it's coming through. Okay. Hello? Hey, Christian. 
Hey, what's going on? Can you hear me okay? We broke it. Wow. That, that doesn't so easy. Me. I don't know if it's a connection thing because I'm calling through my computer. And it says we're still on. I'd be interested to see that. I'm going to try that uh, again in a second, but I'm glad to know that you can actually hear the AI. And I, it's off the back of this particular question that I got that said, uh, which was it? Where was it? About the AI that said, can you break it? Let me see. Comments published. Help her review. Filter. Stand by, guys. This is going to be good. Somebody asked me um, to ask it what I should be for Halloween. And it was a very weird conversation. <laughs> so, a little bit good. I hope someone can answer me. Okay, I tried this program. It, it is shit. Okay, this guy said Air AI is shit. I understand. Thank you for your feedback. Tell me how you really feel, though. Tell me how you really feel. Yeah, he, <laughs> you comment back. Tell me how you really feel. <laughs> yeah. Script update. Man, everybody's looking for the script. Guys, okay. So we had Al Biz Mastery, button up systems. Everybody looking for the script on that particular one, um, saying they can't hear it, which is weird because there is sound. Um, and then we, I just saw this today and I can't remember what they asked me to do. They wanted me to try to break it, which I'd love to do. So if you have your opinions and thoughts about how I can break this, then let me know because I want to break the AI. Although I'm still actively on a phone call with this and uh, I'm going to hang up because they're not responding to me at all. You heard that little hang up sound? Let's try this one more time. All right, here we go. Launch in three, two, one. And again, it could be a, a function. There we go. Hear a ringing? Hello? Hey, Christian. Hey, what's going on? Who is this? All right. Well, let's just light this on fire. Damn. Now I understand why he said, let's say. Open AI is shit. You know what I think? I think technology is great when it works and if it works as expected, but that could be a combination of, since I've never called the Google voice number before and tried to have that conversation on the computer, it could be Google voice and it could be that. So stranger things have happened. As we continue to try and promote this, there's always those caveats, just like Andrew was talking about with the SMS messaging. The SMS messaging is a little bit further down the road to being like viable for a hands-off than this is right now but we're not going to stop because at some point i know it will be and being on the ground floor of this is just really exciting anyway so all that said it is 10 37 we have about five six seven eight minutes left if you have any questions feel free to drop them in the chat and then let me know if there's anything else that you want to um to i have a question what is your question? You guys talk about, you know, leveraging other investors, um, other wholesalers, partnering up, JVing, things like that. So I've kind of tried to deploy that a little bit in my market and find, you know, the right conversation. So this week I've had probably five or six conversations um, with other investors who have like warm opportunities, but not really sure what to do with. So I've really been trying to lean into more. You know, the, the whole creative REI or not the creative REI, it's just the creative intensive that we did over the summer um, into the fall has really changed my perspective on things. So, you know, what are ways you guys are uh, putting yourselves out there to get more opportunities like that where you can come up with, you know, like a slot option or like a sub two deal or things like that where, you know, somebody who isn't as well versed in that. Uh, base um, can benefit and you guys can do more deals together. 
So you're talking about from a learning perspective or from a actually getting in front of the leads that would become good opportunities for creative? The latter. Okay. Leveraging other people's networks and current existing leads to get more involved and do more deals with them. Well, I think it goes along the lines of like, if as you're building relationships with other investors as buyers or otherwise, you, you want to ask them the basic questions that you normally would, right? What, what types of like, properties you're going after what's your perfect scenario in terms of an investment property and they might say i like buying holes they might say you know i like um fix and flips or burrs or whatever and then you know get a little bit more information like oh cool what kind of prospects are you targeting so they say like oh i'm targeting like free and clear properties and you know vacant free and clear properties well that's not going to be what you're not going to do this type of creative transaction with it which is Subject to, there's no mortgage, so you're not taking it over subject to. So there are ways to kind of, whether in your own marketing or as you're linking up with other investors to do that joint venturing scenario, that you can actually strike creative uh, joint venture deals with because if they are going after, let's say, you know, properties that might have mortgages, maybe they're lower interest rates because they're thinking subject to is the way to go, but they don't know how to do wraps that would be one thing that you could add value to them by helping them through that type of scenario, uh, a wrap, especially when it comes to a slot deal, right? Where there's really 0% equity and you can't really get any meat on the bone or whatever. And you've done a couple of these already. So I would put you on the spotlight to talk about that. Yeah. Oh, I have one that I would love your opinion on. It's an interesting lead. Shoot. Um, so this guy is been trying to sell his house since July. He's a um, realtor self-listing it. Um, and really, it just is a victim of the interest rates. Interest rates are high. It's very hard to have an affordable mortgage for what he's asking for for the property. He's, he's dropped the price down a couple different times. Um, you know, his mortgage is 180 Um it's it's three listed for three hundred now. Um, he's really looking for eighty thousand at closing in order to complete another project after the um, after the sale of his current property. So it, it, there's there's kind of a need for eighty k. Um, he likely do a subject to transaction if that makes sense but the amount down relative to the purchase price of the property is a really large number where you know even doing like buy it subject to and then turn around and do a lease option at, on the back end you know yeah it's going to be 10 percent cash flow but you're going to tie up ninety thousand dollars in the property to get that 10 percent cash flow so um it's kind of it's, it's it's challenging to pitch like a, a slot deal or just a lease option deal or a, you know buy it on, on a hybrid or something like that and then turn around and wrap it um because there really like is a need for for 80k i think if you drop the price like probably the if i had to say you know you know the question what if what if it doesn't sell what are you going to do he's talked about like you know, I could rent it, but I just, I really, really don't want to do that. I think he's just going to continue dropping the price until, until he's able to sell. So I think there's a little, um, there's history of that. Um, I'm just really confused with, you know, how to find the best exit strategy where, where it makes sense. Yeah. Good question. So in this, I mean, you, you open it up with talking about like, is this a viable opportunity for a slot deal? And the answer sounds like, well, sure it could be, but you mentioned tying up about 90 K obviously 80 K plus all the other fees and closing costs and all that stuff. The truth is with this, like if he really is probably going to be dropping the price continually, like it's a sit and wait game and follow up. He's a realtor and I'm not saying I know him, from Adam, but what I can say, and you agree with this and probably everybody else watching this, if you don't already know a lot of realtors, um, they kind of overestimate what the property might be, you know, selling for on the open market for the opportunity to get the listing. And I'm not saying they do it in a gross way that's outside of a fiduciary duty to the seller, but there are those who do. 
And if you're a seller of the property, what do you think your property is worth relative to what it actually is, more or less, usually? More. Well, the market's going to tell you what it's worth. And in this case, the market's telling him that it's not worth the 300K. Why? Interest rates. That might be the actual reason why. There's two ways you can go about this. If it's a viable opportunity for you, no matter what the exit strategy is, if you're able to come up with private funds that you're going to pay a little bit less interest on, then awesome. I don't know very many people, especially because our like private capital that we're that we're borrowing, we're lending, uh, we're letting it go for like seven percent, seven point five percent, sometimes six. That's pretty close to interest rates anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So what I what I like to do is be as competitive as possible in terms of what I'm willing to pay, but at the same time, it has to be mutually beneficial. So if you're able to somebody who's a seller, for instance, right? Um, with another deal. And this is what we do all the time. We pitch the private money and they might say what we do is above prime. But this case, we're not going to say that because that's more than we're willing to pay for private financing. But if you're able to say, hey, look, interest rates are going to come back down. I could take the bank's money and make them money, or I could take your money at 5% and give you that money. And then when interest rates drop below 5%, you're going to be beating the banks out anyway. And they've been taking advantage of you for the last, let's say you own it for 20 years, 20 years, right? Making money off of you and your property. And that's really what they're in business for, to take your money and lend it out and then charge you if you're getting a loan for your own money, basically. So at the end of the day, you can still, private money would be the way to go if you're able to get that 300K, but it doesn't look like it's gonna be 300K for long because he's gonna continue to drop it. Now, if he does wanna rent it out, you need to ask the challenges with that. Say, well, why wouldn't you wanna do that? Because it sounds like you have a decent property right now, whatever his interest rate is, I don't know. He's Three. Gonna, it's 3%, well, he's got a good interest rate. So say you got a great interest rate on this property, so why wouldn't you, uh, why wouldn't you just want to keep it? It sounds like it's going to cash flow for you. Okay, well, he wants to sell because he needs 80K, right? So he can finish another project. Well, why don't you just let him know, like, you, do you really need that 80K? Like from the sale of this property? You're in the real estate investing business. Have you ever considered private money? Tell him, teach him, equip him, and educate him on private money lending and how he can go. You could even give him the video that I did. It's like two hours long. Like, how do you pitch and present private money lending opportunities because he's in circles, whether he knows these individuals have the money that they're willing to lend or not, but he's in those circles where people actually have money to lend. And 80K ostensibly is not much. And if he says, okay, I got a 3% on this. He could um, get a HELOC. He could get, he could get a HELOC and that's the third option. <laughs> you know, as far as creating opportunity for somebody else who's not an institutional lender, and they don't do that all the time, why not? 5%, 5% to a private money lender for a term. But for your benefit, you just got to wait, dude. You play the waiting game and then, you know, follow up and say, like, I was curious, you know, what are the challenges? And maybe you ask this question and I'd like to know, what are the challenges that he personally has other than the need for the ADK to finish the other project? Challenges he has other than the money? Right, keeping it and renting it out himself. He said he doesn't want to do that. Why? Oh, he's moving out of the country. Good for him. Yeah. So he's like, yeah, I have people in my network and, you know, realtors I know and things like that that could manage the property for me. I just really don't want to do that. You know, I've, he's, he's like, oh, I had it out there for rent and had, you know, people come in, but, you know, just start thinking of the, the liability of like, you know, you know, there's a family with small kids and they're going to beat it up. And then, you know, I have a hot tub on the property and you think about worst case scenario, what if somebody drowns? Like, you know, just a lot of, a lot of what ifs. So, so he, he had tried that route and I don't think he really got what he wanted. If he had listed it for 2,500 originally for rent and it went all the way down to 1,900 by the time he pulled it off two weeks ago for rent. What's his PITI? I mean, it shouldn't be too much. Based on the math that I had, um, his PIT is about 1100 a month. 
So then insurance throw in maybe 75 bucks a month. So probably probably like 1200 PITA. Right. I can slot it for 1900. Well, you're not going to cash flow much. Better than most in the state of Michigan. I'm talking right. usually like one or 200 bucks. Yeah. So your challenge, which with positioning a slot deal to him is what? He just doesn't want to do it. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Well, time changes circumstance. Obviously, you know, if he wants to rent this out himself, that's fine. But he could also be, he could also be a renter. You might like just sandwich lease option it instead of transferring that sandwich lease option to somebody else. You could be the one who's sandwich lease optioning it. Just remove that. Or here's something, sandwich lease option, transfer it from one entity to another to take, I mean, it's your money from somebody else, but you can get a private money lender if you want. I don't know if they're going to do a second position, but you could. I don't know if he's interested in like being a private money lender, but at the end of the day, like seller financing any portion of this may be on the table. Um, but it won't be worth it after a certain point because if it's not worth 300 and it's up for 300 right now and he's just going to continue to drop the price, how much left is on the table really for him to sell or finance? The mm -hmm. value is in that. The value is you have this property, you want to get rid of it. It's a headache right now for you. You need 80K. What's going to happen if you don't get that 80K? That's a good question to ask him, right? Because either way- He is finishing the completion of a build of his next house out of the country okay well what's what's going to happen if he doesn't get it is it habitable or you just you know you don't have tape mud texture and like right. paint, drywall yeah you know? we bought a house from somebody in um montana i'm sorry did we buy it from him no we we didn't buy it from him actually we didn't end up buying it but he's like i need a property um it was his place that he was moving into that the drywall wasn't finished and he needed money to finish all the drywall. So it was basically, you know, drywall level one, just the screws all exposed, not none of that. And he's like, well, I need the sale of this property to be able to fund that. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, we didn't end up buying his property so he could finish that. But I was like, at the end of the day, like you could move into the property without that. Like my basement right now, apart from this room right here, other room it's got bare drywall i don't care like i mean upstairs is finished but it's habitable even if it didn't have all the the right. mud, tape texture and all that stuff and the paint so it depends texture. on what stage it's at yeah i mean i put texture on my wall arizona <laughs> well i put some texture i mean what california bro you don't understand how difficult it is to get drywall to a level five like a level five finish where it's all smooth as glass. Oh yeah. Skim coat. That's just, no, forget about it. I think it looks just fine. If there's a little bit of texture to hide some unevenness. <laughs> That's my personal opinion. I couldn't even tell you what this is because I thought this was orange peel. And then I got it done on my flip and boy, did he not do orange peel. He did like splatter peel. Oh yeah. I don't mind orange peel. I'm like you splattered the whole house. That's, this is not tech. Like, why did you do this? <laughs> I got a little bucket. You just put some some mud in there and thin it down with water and then just spray it. Yeah. Make your own. It's like little bitty dots. I don't do messy stuff anymore. It smooths over. Really I don't paint anymore. No, I don't. See, I don't want to do any of that stuff either. <laughs> but at the end of the day, if you're a seller and you know you think that you need that. It's not going to affect anything but the look and, you know, save up some money to get it done later or do it yourself. DIY is huge these days, bro. DIY is awesome. But I, I would just wait, man. You got to sit on this and then ask him a couple questions. What's going to happen yeah. if you don't get like the 80K? Is that property even livable or is that 80K? Yeah, I'm going to wait and call him back Monday. Right. By the way, I can't tell you because it's been a while since I flipped um, properties in mass. Like, can you get a certificate of occupancy uh, if you if you have like level one bare drywall all over the entire house? I I would imagine you could. No idea. Right? Maybe somebody watching this knows. Different country. Oh yeah, that's right. 
different country? The answer is probably yes, then. Oh, well, with that being said, I'm going to go swim. And and what He's temperature is me outside? Hang on. Outside? Oh, I think it's warm today. I think it's like 42. 41. So you're, you're in the Polar Bear Club, right? Yeah, at the YMCA. Yeah, in your <laughs> All right. Well, hey, thanks, Andrew. Thanks, everybody else for tuning in. Uh, leave any comments and questions. We'll get to them for sure this week or by Friday next week. And uh, definitely check out that Privy webinar we talked about because it's just going to share the process about how you can go virtual. I mean, what did you just talk about before we got on this meeting? You were in L.A. You're looking and you live in Michigan. And heck, you're in northern Michigan, and as you like to do up here. Um, yeah, there you go. Right there. And you're investing in Detroit, which is all the way right there, right? Oh, down there, further. All right, there you go. Yep. And it's not kitten, it's mitten, property solutions. <laughs> right. Okay, so all that said, Privy is a great way to run comps and to find buyers. And I know that's a huge question we get all the time. How do you do those things virtually when you're not in that area? Do you need to walk the property? No, you can use this tool. We're going to share Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern for 7 p.m. Eastern for Pacific. I'll link it in the description. You guys can go to that. You don't want to miss that. And uh, we'll see you guys on there where Chris will be with Benson Juarez. And we'll see you guys next week. Have a good weekend. Let's continue to make real estate investing easy. Made easy. We're making it easy. Made easy. Easy.